Hey guys, I am just checking in. Just finished my workout for the day. Oh, and I did the last 60 seconds as happy feet to just get that last burn. <sighs> hey guys. And one of the things, God, sorry, I'm catching my breath. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me catch my breath for one second. Um, cause woo, the burn is real, right? Mm. So I just finished my workout and one of the things I said to, uh, my wellness coach yesterday is that I have worked out, um, how many days in a row now? And one of the things I said to her, as I said, you know, it's when you find yourself doing things you've never done, right? Good morning. When you find yourself doing things you've never done is when you can expect breakthrough in your life. When you do things you've never done, when you look up and you find yourself doing things you've never done is when you can expect change. And this is like so subtle, guys. Hi, Lorraine. Right? It's very subtle. So for instance, you may not realize it, but when you find yourself changing your routine, when you find yourself trying something new, this it goes to all areas of life. All areas of life. You join a dating site and you are afraid to do it and you've never done it before. Right? You take a class because of something you're interested in and you've never done it before. And you don't, you don't see these things as like a huge big deal. But the, the thing is, guys, is from a manifestation perspective, when you find yourself doing something you've never done is the, one of the most powerful, excuse me, powerful places you can be. Because that is where you're breaking your routine. You're breaking your patterns. You're breaking your habits. You're breaking out of what you've always been doing. Excuse me, guys. I know. I just got running. Excuse me. Right? You're, so you're literally, if you stop and think that what creates your life is your thoughts your daily thoughts, your daily actions, and your daily feelings. This is what creates your life, right? Which is why we teach so much on getting into a place of new habits, new thoughts, and new feelings, new words. So if what if your life is being created by what you do every day, the way to create new life is by changing what you do every day. Something you do every day has to change. Something in your week has got to be different than the last eight weeks, than the last 52 weeks, than the last, right? Right? 2020 Vision 3738 says, I'm currently eating the keto way, which I've never done. And you're going to get amazing results, sweetheart. Why? Because you're doing something you've never done. You're about to get breakthrough that you've never had because you're doing something you've never done. I just, I want you to stop and think about this for a second. I want you to think about your life. I want you to think about your patterns. I want you to think of human beings. We are creatures of comfort and we are creatures of habit. Human, as human beings, our human psychology guys, we are creatures of comfort and creatures of habit. So guess what? You typically will get up, do the exact same things every day with a little variation throughout your week, right? You're doing the same things on repeat. You get up, you go to work, you go to lunch, right? You come home, you cook dinner, whatever your routine is, it's time to shake it up. It's time to th shake it up. 
intentionally, CC says, starting to wake up in the morning to spend time with God instead of staying on Facebook. Boom. That's about to shift everything in your life intentionally, CC. It doesn't seem like a big deal, okay? It doesn't seem like a big deal. But the truth is, is when you change something. So let me let me take intentionally CC's example. She said, I started waking up in the morning to spend time with God instead of staying on Facebook. So now CC's making her spiritual well-being a priority. This is the power of intention. This is the power of the law of attraction. This is a powerful, this is the universal pr principle of reaping and sowing. And CC has initiated a process mentally and spiritually that now says, I am prioritizing my spiritual well-being. I am prioritizing my relationship with God. I am prioritizing my spiritual alignment. I am prioritizing my peace. Guess what that goes out as? Message to God, message to the universe, whatever your God is, right guys? Whatever, whatever it is, your faith system. It goes out as a message, more of this, more alignment, more well-being, more spirituality, right? More peace. So all of a sudden, what comes, what starts coming CC's way? More people who are aligned with that. More resources that are aligned with that. More ideas that are aligned with that, right? More help on spiritual alignment. More help on peace. Now she's initiated a process. More priority making CC a priority. <gasps> Wait a minute. You mean by just one small change in the morning in CC's routine, she has created a ripple effect ripple effect spiritually that begins to reshape her life begins to give her life new direction new direction vs custom cupcakes never been completely single always jumping into things this is the first time i'm actually loving myself more and comfortable being completely single while waiting for the one so guess what custom cupcakes you're putting out into the universe I'm happy. I'm healthy. I'm going to make myself a priority. I am going to validate myself. I don't, I am not codependent. I don't have to have somebody around me. I love me. I'm going to focus on me. Guess what it's going to attract, right? It's going to attract more people who align with that. It's going to attract more opportunities. Next thing you know, you're digging more into your passions. You're digging more into what makes you happy. You're digging. So now, now all of a sudden, what comes with that? Maybe your business begins to take off because for once in your life, you're focused. For once in your life, you're intentional. For once in your life, you're really giving it everything you've got. And anything that you focus on Anything you focus on longest becomes strongest. Anything that you give it your prime attention and make a priority is going to grow, is going to expand. So maybe all of the other goals you've had have been waiting on you to give it your all, waiting on you to stop being so distracted, to stop trying to struggle and make things happen. Stop giving your all because guess what goes into you focusing on dating and focusing on always having somebody focusing on them, focusing on whatever they want from you, focusing on their issues, focusing on any drama, focusing now God's got your attention. You've got your attention, right? Anything that you change, anything that if you want to see change in your life, you're going to have to change up your routine. You're going to have to change up what you do. You're going to have to step out of your comfort zone, out of whatever it is you do every single day, and you're going to have to do something different. You're going to have to do something new. You're going to have to break out of your routines, break out of your habits, break out of whatever it is, your whatever your life looks like right now. And this is your homework. Here's your homework. I'd like you to analyze a week in your life. Analyze a week in your life. Sit down, write out 
Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, write out the seven days of a week. And I want you to do a journal entry of what you do typically every Saturday, what you do typically every Sunday, what you do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. This is your homework today. And I want you to analyze what exactly do you do every day if you just take a snapshot of a, a typical week for you what does a typical week look like for you right what does a typical week look like for you and as you look at those habits as you look at that routine as you look at your schedule as you look at your right what are you repeating? What are your patterns? What are you doing with the time God has given you? And as you analyze that, I want you to look at it and think about, first of all, doesn't it, 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 it should begin to make sense about where you're at right now. And then I want you to ask yourself a question. What needs to change to get me a different result? What has to happen? What do I need to change in this daily routine, in this weekly routine? What needs to change in order for me to get a different result, to get a result I'm looking for or something I want to change in my life? This is your homework, okay? So the homework assignment is to analyze a week in your life. What does a typical week in your life look like? What are your daily activities? What are your daily thoughts? What are your daily conversations? I want you to look at your life and break it down. Do a, an inventory. Guys, I'm sorry, I'm burping. <laughs> My coffee, <laughs> right? Do an inventory. And after you've done the inventory, take a look and see if I want this result what should I be doing to get a different result in my life what what is what am I not doing on a day-to-day -day basis what am I dreaming about that I'm not working on in this these hours how many hours in, in, a, in a week guys somebody do the math for me real quick in seven days there's 24 hours in a day what's seven times 24 7 times 4 is 28, 7 times 2 is 14, 168 hours, you've got 168 hours in a week, did I do my math right guys, right, did I do my math right, you got 128 hours in a week in 7 days, did I do that right guys, somebody check my math, <laughs> 128 hours in a week, if you take out sleep, Okay, somebody, Pyrotech, thank you. 168 hours in a week. And if you take out sleep, let's just say you're giving yourself a good six to eight hours of sleep a day. That's going to take out, even if we take out eight, right? Eight times seven is 56. 168 minus 56 is 112, right? We got 112 hours left. 112 hours left after sleep in one week. I, I dare you to do the math. Go into your 112 hours. What are you doing with your 112 hours, right? 112 hours. What are you doing with those hours? And what are what are you going to change within those hours in order to get something you want? Can you share an example of something you changed in your routine that elevated your business at a pivotal moment? <laughs> I'm thinking about a pivotal moment, right? Pivotal moment. I would say whenever you have set a goal and now you want to get it done, you have to recognize that it's not going to happen in these regular hours that you want them to happen. There's always going to be some type of a sacrifice involved. So for instance, when I was publishing my first book, I had to literally buckle down. I took two weeks. I put, went into a guest room in our house and I put a sign on the door that said, do not disturb. This is for my kids and my husband. And I closed myself off in a room and I did nothing but write and rewrite, right? Work, 
work, work for two weeks, including the weekends, closed off, no entertainment, no social, everything shut down. I got to get this done. And that, that was not happening in the normal hours of the day, right? Um, something else that's really crucial, like when it's not just um, a special project to get done where you buckle down and work 18 hours to get it done. Guys, for years while I was building businesses, I, I did not watch television. A lot of you guys are so caught up in entertainment. A lot of you guys are so caught up in entertainment. You, you, you spend too much time being entertained. You spend too much time watching television, watching shows, watching people, or being on social media tuned into what other people are doing. I'm just keeping it real. And, it, and then you're not doing the work. You're not working on your goals and your dreams. You're caught up. Guess what? The person you're watching, the movie you're watching on Netflix, they already reached their goals. Those actors are, are on goal. They're on task. They're, they're doing what they love. You, you're not getting anywhere sitting around Netflix and chilling. You're not getting anywhere staying on social media three and four hours a day, consuming other people's lives. And they're, they're living their best life. They're doing what they want to do. But you're over here, got stuff you put on hold or you're ignoring or you're procrastinating. Guys, For I did not start watching television until I got married. I didn't start spending, you know, evenings chilling, being entertained, watching TV or watching movies and stuff until I got married. Real talk. I, my life did not, when I was single and grinding, and even to this day, I don't watch any reality TV. I don't watch anything. Like at the end of the day, people will talk about so-and-so and so-and-so and so this person. I, I don't watch those shows. I don't even know who people are talking about. Because even to this day, I don't have time to consume this stuff that you guys sit around being entertained by. And half of it to me is not even funny because I'm sitting watching it and it's a hot mess or it's just drama and craziness. I'm not consuming that. Good morning, Nat. Guys, congratulations to Nat. She just came on. She's one of our future Abundant Life Coaches, Certified Abundant Life Coaches. She just signed up. I'm going to make a post about you, Nat. Right? Yeah. Like, so guys, there's sacrifices involved. It's not going to be, if you want something different, it's not going to be business as usual. Right? I, I literally dated when I was single. I only dated in my downtime from my businesses. I only dated as I had time. It was a third, fourth, fifth priority after my dreams, after my businesses, after my my parents, after my kids. I mean, I had a lot of responsibilities. I, I don't have time to be focused on all this people, dating, distractions, social media. I'm using social media to make money. I was using social media to build businesses. It wasn't for fun. Rebirth 888. Did you meet Carrie online dating or in person? Carrie and I met through Facebook. We met through Facebook. I wrote it in my first book. Y'all better stop poo-pooing on technology. You better stop acting like you can't meet somebody on a dating app or you can't meet somebody online. There is all types of people online. Do you think 35 is too late to be a millionaire? No. Most people don't become millionaires until they're 35, 45, 55. Stop believing the hype that it's just all these young people who make money. A lot of the, most people don't become super successful until they're 40. Because it takes that much time and life and wisdom and experience to get to the point where you can really make some money and it all comes together. So you, you get it. You, you're living your truth. You get authentic enough, bold enough, not caring what other people think, and you go for it. So, yeah, guys, pivotal moments. I think that what's hard for me is that sometimes I, I think that I, when you say some things I have to change, there's things I've done for a really, really long time that have gotten me to where I'm at. 
So for you guys, when it comes to the things that need to change, it's, I have to stop and really think about it because these are my normal habits in my normal life, right? Um, for me, when it comes to health and wellness, that's where I have to make be intentional. I have to literally make sure I'm prioritizing my health and wellness because I'm always running my businesses. I'm always doing a new project, a new idea, creativity. It's my health and wellness where I have to stay really intentional to get results. And I'm always having to challenge myself, right? So for example, I'll give you an example for that one, guys, because it, it will be more relatable. I... When it comes to health and wellness, in the previous week now, I actually schedule out my routines. I, I schedule out my exercise. I schedule out um, my personal training sessions a week in advance. So like the week before, I'm going to plan out, okay, I got a personal training session on Monday. I'm going to work out with my girlfriend Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'm going to get another personal training session on Friday. I hired a chef that is doing gourmet meal prep. All the food gets delivered on Saturdays and Wednesdays. All that food in the refrigerator is the only food I eat, right? I have to literally put intention, thought, and, and accountability, right, in, in these areas where I want to see results that don't come quite as natural to me, where I'm wanting different results and I want consistent results. Good morning, Jerrica, right, where I'm wanting... I'm wanting change and consistency in this area. I have to put accountability and change some things that I do, which sometimes means you need help. Sometimes means you got to incorporate, right? I have a wellness coach, um, personal training, the mirror home gym, right? Um, I, I have to, I have a chef that's putting meals in place, right? Lena Boo says health is important. I started walking daily. I'm looking for a debate weight challenge. Me too. And the bait weight challenge now, I'm looking at a cookbook for the bait weight challenge. I'm doing all kinds of stuff, right, to put all this stuff in place. But it's like, yeah, guys, whatever you want to see, where you, wherever you want to see results in areas where you struggle or it's hard for you, you're going to have to intentionally put in accountability. Because if you want something you've never had, you're going to have to do something different. It's not coming to you passively. It's just not. You're going to have to step out of your comfort zone, step out of yourself, step out of your daily routine. And I'm going to make sure I put the homework assignment inside the body of the video, guys, so you, you'll remember exactly what to do, right? Because you've got to actually, one of the things I would say that is a really key component to success is self-awareness, self-awareness. And self-awareness requires you to always be taking an inventory of you. Always be evaluating. Oops, sorry guys, I'm covering up the camera. Always being, always be evaluating yourself. Evaluating, right, your thoughts, your activity, your feelings, your habits, your patterns, right? It, it requires you to, I'm always evaluating where I'm at compared to where I want to go, I'm always evaluating my activity, my daily routines, my thoughts, my words, my relationships. I'm Nothing with me is passive. Nothing with me is just whatever. I'm always evaluating myself. I'm always looking in, questioning myself, challenging myself, right? Getting to know myself better, 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 better every day. Every day. Why? Because I've got to be the master of me. I've got to know myself. I've got to know my strengths. I've got to know my tendencies. I've got to know my weaknesses. Because if I want to get where I want to be, I have to know me and then I have to make sure that I'm doing what it takes or getting the help it takes to where I can navigate myself manage myself, get the help or accountability I need in addition to myself, right? I've got to be the master of me. I got to know myself better than anybody because we all have issues, tendencies, mind blocks, right? Sabotaging ways that we operate. We all have subconscious stuff. That's getting in the way of where you really want to go. Marquisha says, I got to know me. You have to know you. 
I've got to understand myself. I've got to know what makes me tick. I got to know my my triggers, my tendencies, my pain, my issues. I got to know the the patterns of my own thinking so that I can actually work around yourself. So you can make sure you're not blocking your own blessings. So you can make sure you're getting out of your own way. So you can make sure that you're challenging yourself, asking yourself the hard questions. Sometimes, guys, you got to sit back and say, you're just being lazy. Maybe I'm just lazy about this. Or maybe you're actually scared. Right? Maybe you're scared. Maybe the procrastination comes from a place of sabotage. Maybe you're scared of success. Maybe you, you, you want it so bad, but maybe you're afraid of it. Right? Gretchen says, be aware of my own blind spots. So good. I'm excited for class tonight. Me too, Markeisha. So listen. Yeah, those in the work master class, I'll see you tonight in class. I'm teaching tonight. So I'll see you. But this video is about you stepping out of your comfort zones and doing some things. Right? Professor Pope already on fire tonight, about to be good. Yes, man, we have a great time tonight. Make sure you're challenging yourself. Make sure you're stepping out of your comfort zone, guys. Because it's so important if you want to see change. You're going to have to do something you've never done. Aloha from Hawaii. Hi, sweetheart. Yeah, you're going to have to do something you've never done. All right, guys, I'm going to go home, get to work. I'm working on master class. I'm working on ALPCC, working on all kinds of stuff. Make sure you get your applications in. If you're wanting to be a certified abundant life coach, those spots are going. Okay. Mm -hmm. So make sure you get your stuff in. If you want to be a certified abundant life coach, class starts August 16th. Um, registration is open. There's only a certain amount of spots, guys. So you want to make sure you get in to class. All right. All right. Love you guys. Blessings in abundance. I'll see you tonight. And the e-course for the work masterclass is launching. You're going to get an email. If you're on our list, you're going to be able to get into the e-course for that. So you can start working through all this stuff I talk about that teaches the core life skills, right? The core life skills, the work masterclass teaches you some real core fundamental life skills of navigating self navigating self-awareness, navigating, right? Teaches core stuff. You need that. Thank you, sweetheart. And then, um, oh, and the RLP show is back tomorrow night, right? Real Talk with Rebecca is back tomorrow night. That's what I call it, kind of on the sideline. Real Talk with Rebecca is back tomorrow night with guests, right? Tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Eastern right here on Instagram. Come back in with me. All right. All right. I will see you guys. See you in class tonight. How can I ask you a question without it being on live? Jerrica, send me an email to live at RebeccaLynnPope.com. Just send it to that email address and just say in the subject, I've got a question, but not live. And then I'll try to address it in one of my, um, one of my videos. I'll try to ask it as long as it's not like really complicated. If it has a lot of variables and you got it, like it's really detailed. I, you know, I can't answer because there's too many questions I would have without you coming live to ask the question so I could really get a better understanding. I hope that makes sense, Jerrica. Okay. All right. Mwah. Blessings in abundance, guys. I'll see you guys tonight in class and then see you tomorrow on, on the show. All right. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.